Peace and blessings. Welcome to the campaign trail. And man, will this episode live up to the name campaign trail. Um, you see the title. This is called Monsters Ball. Monsters Ball. We're comparing monsters. And if you don't know exactly what I'm talking about, this is what I'm talking about. Apparently, Monsters Ball, you know, whether it's our sisters that claim to be boss chicks, corporate powerhouses, equal movers and shakers in corporate America or in politics, or those of us that's balling with music and entertainment, professional athletes, businessmen, monsters ball. The monsters are balling, right? So since it's been a uh, unequal focus on one particular alleged monster. You know, I wanted to try to balance the scales on another type of monster, and I wanted us to compare monsters, if if we will. A lot of us are Christians, and we say that all evil is the same and all evil is equal. Well, let's see. So we're gonna start off with uh with this. Eight and a half months pregnant, y'all. Watch this. Can I help you? I'm looking to have an abortion. How far along are you? I'm 34 right now. My boyfriend is kind of out of the picture now, so I don't really have any support. It's a four to five day procedure. A needle is inserted through the abdomen and into the fetal heart. Lidocaine is injected and that will completely numb the fetus. After that, we inject a medication called digoxin and another medication called KCL, which will slow and then stop the fetal heartbeat. And then we'll give you a medication called misoprostol. Misoprostol will sort of induce contraction, will assist you in sort of pushing in the induction and then remove all of the products of conception. Fair use, of course, fair use. Definitely going to feel discomfort and cramping, but we do give you fentanyl and Versed during the procedure. We specialize in later trimester care. Our doctor is very well versed in what he's doing, and he's very good. So I'm not like a rare situation. Y'all help no. women this late in pregnancy all the time. All the time. Yikes. It Yikes. So... Um, like I said, this is a monster's ball. We just comparing monsters or monsterisms or whatnot. Um, so we, we are aware of one side of this, this screen. So we just kind of balancing out the other side. And, um, here's another one. This, well, it, actually this is, this is a uh, pretty long and, uh, it's a trigger warning. I just want to let y'all know off the top. It's a trigger warning. So this video, of course, will be uh, for educational uses only. And I'm going to have to mark it as kind of triggering or whatever when I post it up. But here we go. My name is Dr. Anthony Levitino. I'm a practicing obstetrician gynecologist, and I performed over 1,200 abortions. First, I'm going to describe a first trimester medical abortion. This is a procedure in which the mother swallows pills in order to terminate her baby, and it is performed up to the ninth week of pregnancy. The procedure involves two steps. Step one, at the abortion clinic or doctor's office, the woman takes pills which contain mifepristone, also called RU-46. RU-46 blocks the action of a hormone called progesterone. Progesterone is naturally produced in the mother's body to stabilize the lining of the uterus. When RU-46 blocks progesterone, the lining of the mother's uterus breaks down, cutting off blood and nourishment to the baby, who then dies inside the mother's womb. It is important to note that even after it has been taken, it is possible to reverse the effects of RU-46 and save the baby if progesterone is administered. The sooner, the better. Step 2. 24 to 48 hours after taking RU-46, the woman takes misoprostol, also called Cytotec, that is administered either orally or vaginally. RU-46 and misoprostol together cause severe cramping, contractions, and often heavy bleeding to force the dead baby out of the woman's uterus. The process can be very intense and painful, and the bleeding and contractions can last from a few hours to several days. Fair use, I'm just, you know, breaking it up a little bit. Uh, monster's ball. While she could lose her baby anytime and anywhere during this process, the woman will often sit on a toilet as she prepares to expel the child, which she will then flush. She may even see her dead baby within the pregnancy sac. At nine weeks, for example, the baby will be almost an inch long, and if she looks carefully, she might be able to count the fingers and toes. 
After she has disposed of her baby, the woman may have bleeding and spotting for several weeks. Bleeding lasts, on average, 9 to 16 days. 8% of women bleed more than 30 days, and 1% require hospitalization because of heavy bleeding. RU46 is only FDA approved for the first seven weeks of pregnancy. While RU46 can be used off-label up to nine weeks, the failure rate increases as the pregnancy progresses. At seven weeks, it has a 5% failure rate. At eight weeks, an 8% failure rate. And at nine weeks, a 10% failure rate. Um, it's fair use, like I said. Um, Monsters Ball, this is the, the title of this episode. Um, let's continue. If failure occurs, she will usually be offered a surgical abortion. For the mother, medical abortion often causes abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, headache, and heavy bleeding. Maternal deaths have occurred, most frequently due to infection and undiagnosed ectopic pregnancy first trimester surgical abortion called suction DNC, dilatation mm. and curatage. Mm. This is the most frequently performed abortion and is used typically from 5 to 13 weeks of pregnancy. After administering anesthesia, the abortionist uses a speculum like this. This is placed inside the vagina and opened using this screw on the side, allowing the abortionist to see the cervix, the entrance to the uterus. The cervix acts as a gate that stays closed for the duration of pregnancy, protecting the baby until it is ready for birth. Mm. The abortionist uses a series of metal rods called dilators, like these, which increase in thickness and inserts them into the cervix to dilate it, gaining access to the inside of the uterus where the baby resides. The baby has a heartbeat, fingers, toes, arms, and legs, but its bones are still weak and fragile. Mm. The abortion. I just had to... Uh, push pause and keep in mind that you know none of these innocent babies have signed up for any of this so they don't get a right to choose this takes a suction catheter like this one this is a 14 french suction catheter it's clear plastic about nine inches long and it has a hole through the center it is inserted through the cervix into the uterus the suction machine is then turned on with a force 10 to 20 times more powerful than your household vacuum cleaner. Mm. The baby is rapidly torn apart by the force of the suction and squeezed through this tubing down into the suction machine, followed by the placenta. Though the uterus is mostly emptied at this point, one of the risks of a suction DNC is incomplete abortion. Essentially, pieces of the baby or placenta left behind. Mm. This can lead to infection or bleeding. In an attempt to prevent this, the abortionist uses a curette to scrape a lining of the uterus. Mm. The curette is basically a long-handled curved blade. Once the uterus is empty, the speculum is removed and the abortion is complete. The risks of suction DNC include perforation or laceration of the uterus or cervix, potentially damaging intestine, bladder, and nearby blood vessels, hemorrhage, infection, and in rare instances, even death. Future pregnancies are also at a greater risk for loss or premature delivery due to abortion-related trauma and injury to the cervix. <clears throat> Second trimester surgical abortion called dilatation and evacuation, or D&E. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, just breaking it up for copyright uh, reasons. But, man, this is, this is hard to watch. And, um, you know, people that's, that's having freak-off parties are, are the monsters, though. A DNA is performed between 13 and 24 weeks of pregnancy. After administering anesthesia, the abortionist uses a weighted speculum, like this one, that opens the vagina widely. Because second trimester babies are so large, this greater access facilitates a late-term abortion. Late-term abortion requires that the cervix be prepared 24 to 48 hours in advance with laminaria. Laminaria is a type of sterilized seaweed that absorbs water over 8 to 12 hours and swells to several times its original diameter. Once removed, metal dilators can be used to further open the cervix as needed. Once the cervix has been stretched open, the suction tube is placed inside. A baby at 20 weeks gestation is as big as the length of my hand, from head to rump, not counting the legs. The suction machine is turned on, and pale yellow amniotic fluid surrounding the baby is suctioned out through the catheters. With babies this big, 
they don't fit through catheters this size. Mm -hmm. The baby's bones and skull are too strong to be torn apart by suction alone. This is a sofa mm -hmm. clamp. Mm -hmm. A sofa clamp is made of stainless steel. It's about 13 inches long. The business end is about two and a half inches long and a half mm -hmm. inch wide, and there are rows of sharp teeth. This is a grasping instrument. When it gets a hold of something, it does not let go. Mm. The abortionist uses this clamp to grasp an arm or leg. Once he has a firm grip, the abortionist pulls hard mm. in order to tear the limb from the baby's mm. body. One by one, the rest of the limbs are removed, mm. along with the intestines, the spine, and the heart and lungs. Mm. All right, let me, let me stop that. Let me stop that. Uh, the title of this is called Monsters Ball. You know, we balling. Balling out. Usually the most difficult part of the procedure is extracting the baby's head, which is about the size of a large plum at 20 weeks. Mm. The head is grasped and crushed. The abortionist knows he has crushed the skull when a white substance comes out of the cervix. Yeah. This was the baby's brains. Yeah. The abortionist then removes skull pieces. He removes the placenta and any leftover parts of the baby with a curette, scraping the lining of the uterus for any remaining tissue. Mm. The abortionist then collects the baby parts and reassembles them to make sure that there are two arms, two legs, and all the pieces. Once all mm. the parts have been accounted for, the abortion is complete. For the woman, mm. this procedure carries a significant risk of major complications, including perforation or laceration of the uterus or cervix with possible damage to the bowel, bladder, and other maternal organs. Infection and hemorrhage can also occur, which can even lead to death. Mm. Future pregnancies are also at greater risk for loss or premature delivery due to abortion-related trauma and injury to the cervix. Finally, I'm going to describe a third trimester induced abortion, which is performed at 25 weeks to term. I, I got to stop. I got to stop. I got to take a few breathers. Uh, and this is a real doctor. You know, he's just talking in, in blunt language. And this is for educational purposes only. This is strictly for educational purposes only. At this point, the baby is almost fully developed and viable, meaning he or she could survive outside the womb if the mother were to go into labor prematurely. Because the baby is so large and developed, this procedure takes three or four days to complete. On day one, the abortionist uses a large needle to inject a drug called digoxin. Digoxin is generally used to treat heart problems, but a high enough dosage of digoxin will cause fatal cardiac arrest. The abortionist inserts the needle with the digoxin through mm. the women's abdomen or through her vagina mm. and into the baby, targeting either the head, torso, mm. or heart. The mm. baby will feel it. Babies mm. He said the baby will feel it. Lord have mercy. At this stage, feel pain. When the needle pierces the baby's body and the digoxin takes effect, the life of the baby will end. The abortionist then inserts multiple sticks of seaweed called laminaria into the woman's cervix. They will slowly open up the cervix for delivery of a stillborn baby. While the woman waits for the laminaria to dilate her cervix, she carries her dead baby inside of her for two to three days. On day two, the abortionist replaces the laminaria and may perform a second ultrasound to ensure the baby is dead. If the child is still alive, he administers mm. another lethal dose of digoxin. The woman then goes back to where she is staying while her cervix continues to dilate. If she goes into labor and is unable to make it to the clinic in time, she will give birth at home or in a hotel. In this case, she may be advised to deliver her baby into a bathroom toilet. Mm. The abortionist then comes to remove the baby and clean up. Mm. If she can make it to the clinic, she will do so during her severest contractions and deliver her dead son or daughter. Mm. If the baby does not come out whole, then the procedure becomes a DNE, a dilation and evacuation. Mm. And the abortionist uses clamps and forceps to dismember the baby piece by piece. Once the placenta and all the body parts have been removed, the abortion is complete. I, you know, I, the reason why I'm going through these details is because I'm being forced and my family is being forced to see and read details about uh freak offs or you know whatever else is going on by these uh, 
black males is one in particular black male. So since I have to hear and we have to hear the details daily about that, I just decided to, you know, put d these details, you know, because this is happening much more frequently to, to many more human lives, which are all innocent human lives. I don't know if the the human lives, the adult human lives that, you know, the, the freak off fests, you know, were innocent or not, but I know these are. Late term abortions have a high risk of hemorrhage, lacerations and uterine perforations, as well as a risk of maternal death. Future pregnancies are also at a greater risk for loss or premature delivery due to abortion related trauma and injury to the cervix. As I mentioned at the beginning, I'm Dr. Anthony Levitino, and in the early part of my career as an OBGYN, I performed over 1,200 abortions. Mm. One day after completing one of those abortions, I looked at the remains of a preborn child whose life I had ended, and all I could see was someone's son or daughter. Mm. I came to realize that killing a baby at any stage of pregnancy for any reason is wrong. Mm. I want you to know today, no matter where you're at or what you've done, you can change. Mm, Make on. a decision today to protect the preborn. Thank you for your time. Mm, man. Um, man, what can I say? What can I say? So, yeah, let me not prolong this. Okay, this is where we at. This is what we're dealing with. The title of this is a slang term for somebody that's successful and that got up making a lot of money or got a lot of power and influence. It's called balling. And it's a movie, I think, that came out called Monster's Ball. You know, so that's what this is a take on. So based on that and based on these statistics, this is real. You know, we wanted to compare monsters, compare monsters. Let's go through some stats real quick and we get up out of here. Um, these are according to stats. And this is a shout out Alveda King on Instagram at Alveda King. I believe that's uh, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s niece or great niece or something like that. 27 million black babies have been aborted since 1973 in America alone. 27 million. 27 million. It's only 49, 50 million black people in America right now, period. The descendants of slaves is the one I'm referring to. So these stats, 27 million. I don't know how many thousand that is per day, I should say, on average since 1973. Um, let's keep going. 79% of Planned Parenthood surgical facilities are strategically located within walking distance of Black and Hispanic communities. Mm. And out of that enormous number, uh, those two words, you know, grape and, you know, that one account for hardly any of these procedures. So why are they now a focus? And at the bottom, it says just 1%, and I've heard even less than 1% of women obtain this procedure because they became pregnant through the above said, the grape or the, the cest or health risk or whatnot. So 95, at least 95% of all of this is just irresponsible, unwanted pregnancies. Chemical deletion pills have led to a 500% increase in uh, deletion-related ER visits. Mm. Trip this statistic. 36% of us who have, you know, our women who have had this procedure attend church at least once a month. Christians, they call themselves Christians, at least 36% of the women who have this procedure done attend church at least once a month. Mm, mm, mm. And that brings me to this, you know, if we're going to be talking about this, we're going to point these fingers at, at the guy on the right. Then while we doing that, he or she, especially the she's that are without this grade level of sin, let her cast the first stone at him stats uh, according to these stats and these stats were all 2022 stats 
So this actually right here was of 2022. We are, we almost in 2025. So it's far greater, bigger number than that. 27 million in 2022 at the rate of more than a thousand per day of our, our women alone, our, our sisters alone of America. So you can do those, those mathematic numbers. According to recauses of deletion, you see which one tops the list. I'm not going to read it off. 96% of biologists agree that life begins at fertilization, at conception. So they agree that that's human life at conception or fertilization. 30% of, of these procedures are committed on women from age 20 to 24. And all of these, like I said, is 2022 statistics. You can go to at Alveda King's page, Instagram page, and she's all the way up to date and up to speed. She's one of the top activists on this subject. And finally, as of September 7th, 2022, more than 1.5 billion with a B babies have been deleted worldwide in the past 50 years so while we busy pointing the finger at you know the freak offs as the monster you know i wanted us to address how monsters really ball and actually compare the monsters and the monstrosities yep so on that note it's gonna be hard to watch but please share this is for educational purposes only and let me know, this is the campaign. This is some of the most painful of the campaign trail. Give me your thoughts, comments, peace.